Hello and welcome to episode 13 of The Story Pilgrim, Hyderabad, part 1. Now remember please to follow, if you already are not, and please rate this podcast. It would mean so much and be much appreciated. If you could also share, that'd be great. Thank you. Now after the success and memorable visit to Mumbai, I was excited to be going back to India and Hyderabad. In the weeks running up to my trip, I had many people ask... Well, let me do the explaining actually from Hyderabad. I am here in India again. I am in Hyderabad. Now, over the last few weeks in the run-up to this trip, I would tell people where I'm going to be for New Year... It's New Year's Eve today, and I'd say Hyderabad, and I would just get met with uh, blank looks. I don't think I met one person that knew where it was, which is quite interesting, isn't it? There is a Hyderabad in Pakistan, but I'm in the Hyderabad in India. I knew about Hyderabad because when I was living in Chicago, I would meet a lot of... Uh, Indians that were working in Chicago within the IT world, the software world and they were mainly from Hyderabad Hyderabad or Bangalore um, it's the it's the ma- it's a major centre for the technology industry here and you can feel that as we arrived here and we took the bus to the hotel, you could feel the real difference between here and Mumbai um, One thing, I saw cows, saw a lot of cows just wandering around the street, but it also feels like there's a little bit more money here. Even though Mumbai has a lot of billionaires, there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of poverty as well. And I'm not saying that that is not here as well, but uh, it feels like it's a much more modern city. And uh, it's much, it feels like it's a much flatter city, Although there's lots of um, of uh, billboards depicting high rises as we drove in, a lot of construction underway, a lot of buildings that you kind of looked at and thought, is that under construction or is it just old and derelict? Um, yeah, it's quite interesting. Um, it's historic sites. How they have Golconda Fort, which I am going to head off to in about half an hour or so um it's the former diamond trading center um it's uh, got a 16th century mosque the charminar um has fought the has four arches supporting towering minarets um and it's got the old city as well um uh, there's a big lake here as well. So I'm going to head out and have a little tour around. And uh, it's going to be quick because I'm only here for a day. Uh, and it's New Year's Eve. So uh, I'm going to be here over New Year, but uh, I'm flying back very early in the morning. So probably won't be celebrating that. Um, not that I celebrate New Year's Eve anyway. So yeah, just excited to see another bit of India. So, there you have it. I said it was going to be quick. A quick trip, but a packed day. So much so that I've had to spread it over two episodes. I hired a guide, Naja. You're going to hear a lot from him. I hope you can keep up. Strap yourself in. First stop, Golconda Fort. Thank you. I welcome you to Golconda Fort. Right now we are standing in front of Golconda. It is a hill fort in southern part of India, located in the city of Hyderabad nowadays. The fort that we see nowadays was built by the Islamic rulers, Qutub Shahi kings, in 16th century. But the original fort belongs to 12th century. 12th okay. century, ruled by uh, one of the prominent South Indian kingdom known as uh, Kakatiyas. Okay. Kakatiyas ruled in between uh, 10th century and up to first quarter of 14th century. 
they built this fort as a frontier garrison to protect their kingdom from the attacks from uh, this side on the top of the hill. In 1143, they built it in, in the mid 12th century. Right. At that time, the hill was known as Golla Kunda. Okay. Golla means in the local language, shepherd community who graze their sheep and you know, um, uh, and goats. Yeah. So okay. they used to bring their flocks of sheep for grazing on the top of the hill in the forest area. Uh -huh. That's why the hill became gradually and it was called by the local people as Golla Konda, which in Telugu means, which means shepherd's hill. Okay. Golla Konda means shepherd's hill. Yeah. So that Golla Konda gradually became Golla Konda, Golla Konda, Gol Konda. Right. That is one version. And if you see the Golconda from the top, it looks round in shape. Round means gold. That's why it is also known as Golko, Golconda. Uh, that Hindu kingdom, Kakatiya kingdom, their capital is Warangal nowadays, which was known as Orugallu during that time. That is about 150 kilometers from here. Okay. So that kingdom was attacked by Islamic invaders of northern part of India. Uh -huh couple of times in the first quarter of the uh, 14th century then finally it was uh, conquered and destroyed by Islamic armies in 1323 right. because of that uh, this hill fort which was a mud fort also became one of the provinces of the Islamic rulers of northern part of India but in the meantime the local chieftains after 1323 about 40 people uh, united together and they threw away the Islamic rulers they ruled for 40 years approximately but because of so many rulers there were uh, differences among them yeah. finally they lost these territories once again to Islamic rulers right. then the first independent Islamic kingdom of South India was founded in 1347 by one uh, Islamic governor of South India known as uh, Alauddin Hassan Gangu Bahmani in 1347. So they ruled first uh, for about three years from a fort called Daulatabad Fort. Then they shifted their capital to a fort known as Gulbarga Fort or Kalaburgi Fort. Okay. That Kalaburgi is about 270 kilometers from here. Then they shifted their capital once again to be there, which is about 130 kilometers west of Hyderabad. Okay. So totally that independent Islamic kingdom of South India known as Bahamani Kingdom ruled this South India for about 180 years. Wow. 180 years yeah. with 18 rulers. Right. Okay. Then, initially, when they came to southern part of India, the Islamic rulers, along with them, many uh, Muslims came. So they were uh, they settled here and they became locals over a period of time. They were known as Deccani Muslims. Deccan is an English form of Dakshin, which means south. Okay. Then these Islamic rulers, they also brought elite family members of the Islamic community from the countries like Persia, Turkey, Saudi Arabia. Yeah. They served as ministers, commanders, officers, etc. They are known as Afakis. Afaki means foreigner. Okay. So there was a constant conflict in between these uh, Deccani Muslims and Afakis. Yeah. And that finally led to the downfall of the Bahamani Kingdom, which is the first independent kingdom of South India. Right. Okay. Then, under the Bahamani Kingdom, there were five provinces. Those are Bidar, Bearer, Bijapur, Ahmadnagar, and Golconda. This is Golconda. The governor who was serving here by 1518, after the death of the 14th Bahamani Shah, Mahmud Shah, he became independent. He became independent and he wanted to make Golconda as his capital and he wanted to rule from here because there is no other place in the kingdom from where he can protect the uh, kingdom. So did all the material come from local? From, come from the local area. These yeah. stones uh, have been brought from the surrounding areas within a radius of you know 5 to 10 kilometers. All these are available very easily. Okay. They use a lime mortar uh, stucco as a binding material like cement. Yeah. And they also plastered the walls with the stucco 
stucco is a mix of lime, mortar, egg yolk, jaggery, coir, etc. Okay. Once if it is dried in the sun, it will last forever, maybe 400 years or 500 years. Wow. But the life of cement is just, you know, 60 to 80 yeah. years, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those projections on the wall are known as machicolations, which have got holes inside. And they can, uh, the soldiers, they can stay the other side by protecting themselves from the attack of the enemies. Yeah. They can use their uh, muskets and small cannons, bows and arrows from there. This fort is mesmerizing. There is so much to it, so much to see. It's a perfect fort for defense. I'm already sucked in into hearing as much information, history as Naja can offer, and he's got a lot to offer. I asked Naja about the country of India as Naja was talking about a lot of different regions. Okay, but you know, for India, for outsiders, because there is a river called as Indus. Uh huh. Indus. So when people started invading on India from the Persia and the Turkey, so they have to cross the mountains. Yeah. Mountains, Hindu Kish mountains, and they have to enter in India by crossing a river called Indus. The people who live beyond the Indus River are known as Indians. Right. So Indus are uh, Hindi, are Hindu. So the religion also Hindu because they are, they are the people who live beyond the Indus River. Okay. So uh, in the ancient days, uh, it was known as uh, India, uh, Bharatakanda. Okay, I've heard Bharata that. Kanda. Yeah. So in the local language, we call our country as Bharat or Bharat Desham. Okay. Bharat Desham means India, yeah. country as in India. And it was also known as Hindustan. Okay. Bharat Varsha, Bharata Kanda, Bharat Hindustan. Hindustan, These are okay. The names. But India is a modern. Yeah, much yeah. Modern. Is, that, is that been, is that come from within India or is that come from outside? Uh, no, it is uh, from the time of the British only. It's us, isn't it? It's yes, the British. It is. It's, before, yeah. that, before that, it was known as Hindustan. 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 Even today, uh, when we go to some uh, Asian countries like uh, you know, Uzbekistan or Turkmenistan, etc., they call us uh, Hindustan. Are you from Hindustan? Okay, the other name of India is Indian subcontinent. You consider it like a continent which has got yeah. uh, even even though if you see if you see India nowadays we have got 28 states 28 28 states there are union territories and uh, there are 22 official languages right wow and there are more than 1650 dialects wow different geographical regions yeah and even in in the same language also there are, there are different accents right Oh, okay. Accents. So that's different why, dialects and yeah. Nah. So you, you can call India as a subcontinent. It is like a continent because we are uh, in southern part of India, in the in the southern South Peninsula, southern peninsula. We are surrounded by three uh, uh, seas. Yeah. So in the east, uh, Bay of Bengal, towards yeah. South Indian Ocean, towards West uh, uh, Arabian Sea, towards North of India, we have got the Himalayas yeah. as boundaries. And the people could enter into the India in those days as invaders from the northwestern part of India right. by crossing the Hindu Kish mountains and the uh, Indus River. Yeah. There's uh, going in through the gateway, and it's very, very intricate. Um, intricate carving in there. Iron plating. Oh yeah, it's iron plated. And these are the spikes that uh, that prevents attacks by the yeah. uh, elephants. Onto and the wood. This can be moved even today. Even today, this can be because this uh, this one is a remade one. Re right. So it was uh, made one. Yeah. But these that are must very weigh big. very yeah. very yeah. heavy. Yeah, yeah. they're very. It's very thick. They're about eight inches thick. These these walls, these doors into the main gate, but the um, the actual artwork the carving into the stone is very very intricate for a, a fort which has been self-defense so hindustan i like that this is a vast country with so many different cultures and subcultures we have just entered golconda fort 
Just through the main entrance we came to an area that was open but had a ceiling, about 30 foot up. There were diamond shapes up there. Naja explained. You can find a roof. The roof has got a screen. Screen yeah. is a technical word, but we call it locally diamond cut. There are 24 diamond cuts like that. Okay. So uh, in, uh, at the areas like this, which have got you know the diamond cuts or spinches, if you make any noise below to that by clapping sound or you know by beating drum or something, that sound reverberates. That echo will come. So that echo can be heard within seven feet circumference. If you stand beyond seven feet circumference, you can just hear that clapping sound. Just not clapping. Really good. Yes, sir. But if someone claps from here, that sound can be heard on the top of the hill. Where okay. you can see one building that really? is known as Dabbar Hall or meeting. In those days, um, the soldiers they used to send their uh, you know send different messages yeah. to the gods on the top of the hill, and different ty types of clapping sounds indicate different meanings at that time. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you can experience. That. Yeah. This is echo. It's cool. But if you go beyond the rent you can just hear that sound of Just there. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a clap. Yeah. 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 You can hear that. Yeah. So if someone claps from here, and one can hear that clapping sound on the top of the key. They can hear it all the way up the top. We and we're saying, that's what? So that's two kilometers away? No, no, it just a uh, aerial distance, maybe half a kilometer. Half a kilometer up there. Oh, because it's the three kilometers all the way around. Yeah, okay. So looking up at the fort, it's really very, very impressive. It's just, it's a, it's a stronghold. It's amazing. It's gorgeous. It's uh, it's amazing. It's quite a huge structure. There's beautiful gardens in here. It's very very busy. Very very busy. Um, so you can see the cash and block. It was used as a uh, gunpowder weight in those days. Wow. The weight of that block is around 120 kilos. Wow. So in those days, uh, as per uh, you know, interesting story, in those days if someone comes to get a job as a soldier or a servant, so they are supposed to lift that cash iron block up to some extent, so to prove their physical fitness. The, the, right, okay. So that kind of uh, system exists even today in some of the tribal communities. Really? If you, yes. If you go further south, uh, in the Nelgiri Hills, uh, where the British developed one hill station known as Wuti, and there is a local prominent tribe known as Toda, and if you visit those uh, Toda temples, uh, village temples. In front of that temple, you can find one stone, um, a granite stone, weighs around 80 to 100 kilos. Uh, a boy, uh, uh, youth, after reaching 19 or 20 years, one day will be fixed by the, you know, village uh, heads. Uh -huh. So in front of all the villagers, he is supposed to lift that uh, stone uh, up to his shoulder up to, to his prove shoulder. his physical fitness. Okay. Then only his parents uh, start finding a girl to him. Okay. So that they'll be confident enough that uh, their son uh, could, uh, you know, uh, support his family yeah, yeah. by working. Wow. So and it, is that is that done it as like a public display or is it just? It's a public. You can you can see that whenever yeah. you go to Uti, which is a popular place. Yeah. Uh, near to just above that uh, botanical gardens, you can visit one village. Right. Toda village. Interesting. I'm just uh, you know giving an example, but there are many such villages. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it's not just 
it's not just the 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 fort it's like a, the garden as well it's very beautiful okay so, actually this one uh, if you look at this uh, there are stone rectangular areas with the grass yes and a stone pitched pathways and you can find that all over here yeah nowadays it is known as nagina bagh nagina means diamond bagh means garden okay and qutub shahi rulers they introduced persian as an official language persian remained as an official language until 19th century also then it was replaced with urdu nowadays urdu is the second official language after telugu in the telangana state okay so uh, you know as per uh, the you know historical books it was a diamond trading center okay okay so yep. uh, during the qutub shahi time period golconda was world famous diamond trading center and mining center okay mines are located uh, uh, about 300 kilometers from here okay uh, uh, in the krishna river valley region at a place called kullur and pidugural etc uh, those areas come in uh, neighboring state andhra pradesh nowadays okay so the golconda uh, they attracted uh, merchants from different parts of the world they used to come from uh, by road and also uh, from the sea port called as bandar um uh, bandar or machli patnam towards east that is more than 300 kilometers from here oh wow okay so it is a diamond market center so it is also reiterated by some of the travelers uh, during medieval time period yeah. one such traveler uh, whose name is domingo fez uh, he has not visited this place but we don't have an idea whether he, he has visited this place or not but he has visited other places in southern uh, part of india which is also minerally rich and a diamond uh, rich region right so uh, his name is domingo fez he visited hampi vijayanagar and he stayed over there as a guest of the king for about 2 years in between 15 20 and 22 he said in his uh, travel log he wrote that Uh, that he has seen um, the markets where diamonds and precious stones were sold by placing them like heaps heaps of diamonds and precious stones wow. like how we keep vegetables in the vegetables market right okay wow. so that is a he is a foreigner came from uh, portugal yeah horse trader and he has written everything he has written about you know strength of the army of a king and the number of elephants and the festivals and the sacrifices of uh, you know the animals and human beings at that time and how uh, deep uh, that uh, those uh, traditions and uh, customs in the society he also said that you know um, the hindu people at the time of the processions uh, by chariots in front of the temples some ardent devotees of shiva he used they used to jump themselves to crush under the wheels of the chariot as a you know to yeah, to, yeah. to reach the god that was the belief wow Wow. so that was written in uh, first quarter of uh, 16th okay. century wow by european travelers yeah to who was witnessing it and yes wow that's fascinating you have other questions no i got lots of <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot you're a wealth of information <laughs> thank you very much no it's 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 the strength of it but it's just the beauty of it as well it's yes. there's a, even yeah. even the walls and stuff it's like yes and if you look yeah. at that wall that is the first wall with 1 km circumference okay. and if you look at that they have not destroyed the existing uh, uh, the boulders yeah. they just uh, left those existing boulders and they connected the boulders to make the wall yeah. that is the beauty of that it is even uh, you know nowadays towards the west of hyderabad we can see lot of uh, development it's like a concrete jungle concrete yeah. forest but uh, until 1995 2000 also when we were uh, studying we used to see that area as an outskirts of hyderabad with forest and you know peacocks boulders beautiful boulders and occasional wildlife like uh, wild boars etc wild boars yeah. then uh, uh, you know porcupines etc but all that area has been transformed as a taken uh, over great jungle because of the development of the city yeah and that is the first wall and this is the second wall yeah Just inside of the second wall there are uh, steps to go in to go up to that uh, ramp where uh, the soldiers they can uh, move freely to take their positions and yeah. the attack and the enemy at the other side yeah so would people <laughs> live in this area as well uh, no so this area uh, inside of this second wall and up to the top of the hill there are uh, administrative buildings there are horse uh, horse stables elephant stables camel stables soldiers barracks 
um, and uh, you know the beautiful gateways and the palaces of the kings and queens sure and the places where uh, they wash their clothes dobikana and the places where they cooked food for the royal family sure and the places where uh, they distributed food to, the, to all the you know the servants soldiers and the guards who are working inside so, so all these are ruins nowadays it's a yeah. massive fortification it is but how m- so when it was at its height mm-hmm. how many people would be like employed like how many soldiers like everybody inside the second wall uh you know i can give you a general information but uh, no i have not read about that it may be an exaggeration when you read about in history book uh, it may not be 100% correct it may sure. be it's 75 to 80% correct and the remaining 20 or 25% will be imagination yeah so it is it is said in those days uh, for a, uh, for any uh, such you know a prominent uh, kingdom they used to have around 30000 to 40000 uh, army wow. when they invade on uh, on their enemies wow so minimum yeah. and uh, they used to have uh, you know 300 to 400 elephants that was written by domingo pes wow and they used to import around uh, 12000 to 13000 uh, horses uh, in a in a in a year because the horses used to die because of the attacks by the wild animals and because of the climate Yeah. because in in some it is extremely yeah. heat yeah. and uh, in the battle so horses yeah. are uh, you know essential commodity in those days but before the advent of portuguese uh, arabian traders who controlled uh, arabian sea they used to supply horses to all the uh, uh, you know south indian uh, kingdoms then uh, 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 from the first quarter of uh, 16th century onwards this uh, um, portuguese people they controlled the horse trade from the arabian uh, uh, peninsula to yeah. different uh, kingdoms of south india right they used to pay in the uh, uh, they used to get money in gold from the different kingdoms okay the functionality of golconda was evident from the sound system to the way they test their strength of their soldiers i was loving it being immersed within all of this As you could probably hear, the fort was packed with tourists. People were sat around having picnics, learning, eating ice cream. I felt inspired, included and lucky. Now we hadn't even started climbing the central part of the fort and I was enthralled. 30 to 40,000 people living within it. 12 to 13,000 horses. Can you imagine that? Naja and I started to chat about life and found out that we had something in common. I'm also an actor. Are you? Yes. Yeah. In 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 this I acted on stage, I acted on uh, you know in front of the camera for the st- uh, television uh, uh, soap operas. That's you still act- do that? Uh, I just stopped it by 2014 because I'm not able to concentrate on my profession. Sure. Yeah. So that's yeah. why I stopped it, but I have my videos and photos and many things. That's fantastic. You have to show me some later <laughs> if you've got some. No, I I, I just, uh, that's my hobby. Yeah. Earlier, but not now. Yeah. Mm. It started off as a hobby and then I got to a point where I said, I think I can do this. Mm. And I'm still, I mean, look, I'm cabin crew, mm. but I lived in Chicago. Mm. from 2012 to 2020 mm. and all I did there was theater just mm. a lot of theater mm-hmm. and then I moved back to England in 2020 mm-hmm. and I've only done film and television since then okay. so right. um, yeah mm. so uh, people say to me I should go to Mumbai and get into Bollywood yeah, of course you will get opportunities anyone if anyone can get opportunities uh, provided if they try for it it is popularly known as Ramadas jail okay Ramadas jail so Ramadas is a title to a person in uh, who lived in 16th century his original name is Kancharla Gopanna okay so he is the nephew of the then prime minister of the kingdom i think with the recommendation uh, uh, and support from his uncle okay he became the tahsildar in the kingdom worked at a place called Nalakunda Palli, 200 kilometers approximately from here. His job is to collect the taxes from the farmers. 
Okay. So he collected taxes from the farmers in those days. And he saw one uh, temple dedicated to Hindu god Rama, one of the incarnation, one of the ten incarnations of Vishnu. It was in dilapidated condition. And he spent that money without taking permission from the king to build that temple. Okay. So when king came to know about that, he became very angry and he summoned Kanchal Gopama here and imprisoned him. That was happened in 1674. Wow. So he was in this prison for almost 12 years, up to 1686 approximately. So he carved those figures that you can see on the walls. Those are, you know, some of the figures of Hitik Ramayana. Very yeah. popular. That uh, saffron color was applied by the local Hindu people. Okay. So that people don't go there with their shoes. Sure. That is like a temple. Yeah. Then he composed many hymns in praising of the God and also in criticizing of the God. Okay. Like criticism because he built a temple. Yeah. He made gold ornaments to the God and Goddess, but the God is not taking care of him. Sure. So the temple built by him is still there. Gold ornaments that he mentioned in his hymns are still there sure. in the museum there. And this is the place where he was imprisoned for 12 years. And those are the figures wow. you know, marked on the wall. Yeah. Uh, so, as per a miracle story, uh, in 12th year, <coughs> king had a dream. So, in that dream, two young princes repaid uh, the money to him that was spent by this guy for the construction of the temple. When he woke up, he saw heaps of coins by the side of the bed, as per that miracle story. He, when he got them counted, that money is equal to the money spent by this person. The next morning, king came here and released Kancharla Gopana from here and said, You are a tree devotee of your God. So because of you, I could see your God in my dream with a divine radiance. Okay. I am just releasing you from here. You go and live your life happily. So he lived for many years after that. Okay. And our uh, Telugu film industry made a uh, film based on the life story of that uh, Kancharla Gopana. And that also became very popular. This is the place where he was imprisoned, and that is the true story. Wow. True story. Yeah. And you know, if you do something, uh, you will pay for it. Yeah. So that is that that is called as karma siddhanta in our uh, you know theory, Hindu theory. That king imprisoned him for about twelve years. So after uh, after one year after the release of this person from here, Golconda was attacked by Emperor Aurangzeb. And Aurangzeb captured that king and imprisoned him at the Olagabad fort. He was in that prison for 14 years and he died over there. These kings built their tombs nearly 90% during their lifetime. The tomb built by this uh, king for him, it was remained vacant. Right. So that is called as karma. Interesting. Wow. That's fascinating. That, wow, yeah, that's really interesting. So that's why in Hinduism we believe in karma. So yeah, if you do yeah. good things, good will come to you. It'll come to you. If you do bad things, uh, bad will come to you. Yeah. That's why we don't, uh, you know, give trouble or you know, uh, yeah, criticizing someone or uh, doing bad to someone. Yeah. It's not acceptable. It's not acceptable. We're nearing the top now of the uh, of the fort, and uh, there's this little mosque it did look like it was just sort of just the front end of it yeah it's only very small but just a monument now but again it's uh it's very picturesque and again it's one of those ones like like arendelle if you uh to get a child to draw a, a fort this is it but the way that it's used the natural uh structure boulders of the of the hill is really impressive and they the walls just literally sit on top of these boulders and using this lime um, <coughs> cement mix it's uh it's very impressive i just asked naga what the population of Hyderabad is this is about 11 million and you can hear the call from the mosque and it's about 2.4 million of them are Muslims here yeah
The Adhan, Call to Prayer A reminder to come to mandatory prayer and leave worldly matters behind. Talking about leaving things behind, I feel I should leave Hyderabad for there for the moment. I hope you're getting a sense of this fascinating fort and city. I've still got to scale the fort, make my way out, find a taxi and go and see some shrines. Don't miss out on the second part, it will not disappoint. Please talk about this podcast with those around you. Review it and follow us on all major social media networks out there. Just search The Story Pilgrim. Also check out our website, please. The Story Pilgrim was written and produced by Darren Hill. Original music by the amazing Anya Baca. Until next time, keep listening and buen camino.